recording. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, TJ Laramie, how are you, man? I'm not too bad. How about yourself? I'm doing well. It's been a while since we spoke. I think we've both progressed in our careers. <laughs> Is that fair to say? Oh, yeah. Where are you at right now? Uh, I'm currently back home in Windsor, Ontario right now, just uh, getting back into training and the swing of things and just taking my time getting back. So how are these lockdowns affecting you or at all training wise? I mean, <clears throat> well, training wise, not too bad right now, but um, we just got back into code red, orange or whatever starting Monday. Uh, I seen Toronto and Peel is going into complete lockdown again. So I expect that we're going to be there quite soon. So um, I'll more than likely after Christmas time, head back to the States and get my training in. If Joe Biden doesn't uh, lock them down too. He'll, he'll do his best. I'm sure. Now, were you down in Vegas training? Yeah, mainly in Vegas. Uh, I've actually been, <clears throat> I went up to Niagara uh, for Niagara top team and they were, I actually enjoyed the training a lot there. So I'll be back there for sure. Well, cool. How has your life changed since you signed the contract? We saw you on Contender Series. That went very, very well, obviously. How did life change after that, or did it change? I mean, it's pretty much all the same. There's nothing, like, special, really. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, it's just about the same. You know what I mean? Um, I just, like doing this more full time, you know what I mean? Just trying to focus everything, my whole life around training more than, uh, say like working when I have to and stuff like that. I kind of have like a little bit more liberties as far as doing what I want and not having to stress about money as much. Not, not saying that I'm making a million dollars or anything, but just doing a little bit better than before. For sure. Have you noticed anything about life? Like I recently went to, Trump rally in the States. I didn't notice that much a difference between Mich obviously you're close to Michigan, Michigan and Ontario, but um, in terms of people acting in a certain way about the virus and everything, masking up social distancing, is there any difference you can point to uh, whether it's in Las Vegas or up in Niagara as compared to back home? Well, in Vegas, it was damn near like it didn't exist. You know what I mean? Like, I was walking shoulder to shoulder with people on Fremont street. Like it, there wasn't a virus at all. Same with the Vegas strip. There's nothing. Uh, there's people wearing masks, maybe a little bit, but nothing really that would have made any difference. And then uh, in Windsor, there's like few restrictions. You have the few people that are kind of strict for the most part. It's mainly people on the internet, man. And it's like just crazy that um, like, I don't know how concerned some people are like not saying that, you know, maybe they shouldn't be concerned, but Hey, operate at your own risk. You do you, I'll do me. And let's leave it at that. That's essentially where I'm at. If you don't want to go somewhere or you think it's not safe to go somewhere, then don't. Um, yeah. I don't think it should be up to the man, the system, Doug Ford at the moment to say, you can't operate your business. People want to come in, then let them come in is what I say. Now, how, political have you I, I see you've you've always p posted like s political stuff here and there would you say you've become more political in the last couple of years or has do you feel like you've been the same uh definitely more involved i feel like it's pretty interesting and honestly it's the easiest way to stir the pot when you want to get someone going <laughs> like the craziest thing because it's like you if you really want a reaction out of somebody and you attack their political view on something or not even attack it, but just throw an opposing view at them, they literally lose their mind. It's it's absolutely, it's crazy. It's it's the funniest thing in the world, though. I love it. Are you talking about just in general or in the sport? Um, well, there's a few people in MMA, but I, I know everybody in MMA is just basically fed up with it now, you know? They're taking the far right side and they're being like, all right, time to like, get back to business let's fucking open this shit up people i know personally are losing their gyms you know what yep, i mean me too. it's uh it's uh it's like enough's enough you know what i mean so like we can protect all these people but the little like the little guys are the ones missing out they're the ones that are 
losing their businesses. You know what I mean? Like, of course, Walmart's going to stay open. Fucking all those big corporations are going to stay open. That like, this is pennies to them. You know what I mean? I mean, this is nothing. But then you got the mom and pa shops that are going to not eligible for any subsidiaries from the government or anything like that. And here we are catering to the few people that are scared. You know what I mean? Well, apparently, according to every poll out there, it's the majority, but not from what I see. What I'm seeing is a lot of people who are journalists or t- maybe even teachers, people who, get, who are going to get paid either way seem to be the ones you have to assume. Because at some point, even if you were supporting some lockdowns early on, at this point, if you're getting locked down again, you're probably going to be out of a job. It's just the way it's going to work. You can't survive like this. No indoor or outdoor dining anymore in Toronto and Peel and any place that's completely locked down. And what I'm seeing, and I got a video out about this, or will be out by the time this shows up on the internet, about how people are coming, journalists are coming after UFC fighters and MMA fighters in general now for their views. Now, it's not really working because you're punching people they're not (laughs) your job isn't really contingent on public opinion but the examples i used in it were the guardian was one and uh who is the other one some somebody else you'd expect but bloody elbow is also who who's always annoyed me i don't know if you ever read any other stuff yeah no trust me they've written some articles about me in the past that uh i wasn't too happy about their latest article, they just made their own little list there of everyone who's a conspiracy theorist that's a fighter. Matt, from Masvidal to Romero to Gino Carano, Tito Ortiz, and even people, fighters, no disrespect, that most people would never have heard of, especially yeah. in, the, in the general public. So I don't understand why this has to happen in in ufc i don't understand why each fighter can't be like their own character like not everyone's going to be colby covington or tyron woodley just let them be who they want to be there's no need to extrapolate on their political opinions in these articles and the only explanation i could come up with is that they're owned by vox i don't know if you knew that sb (laughs) nation's owned by vox media so maybe that's the answer i'm looking for yeah it's it's just weird because it's like okay like you're trying to put the like it's like i said you know you have your opposing opinion and there someone has something to say about it you know what i mean if you don't agree with them you're wrong you're wrong it's not even an opinion it's uh they they are painting it black and white which it's really it's not at all you know what i mean like and it really seems as though like common sense and logic has been thrown out of the the window at this point which i mean I'm not claiming, I'm not even claiming no conspiracy theory, nothing like that. I'm not saying it's like some sort of plan or fucking, I'm not even trying to get that deep on. I don't really give a fuck. But the biggest thing for me is that, like I said, operate at your own risk, operate at your own risk. I don't see how it, how that's complicated for anybody. Uh, Stay home. You know what I mean? If that's something that you're worried about or, um, If you're not worried, then fucking do what you want. You know what I mean? But like, we shouldn't be shutting businesses down because there's a a couple of people that neglect their own health and they're high risk. You know what I mean? Like, and who's to say when the vaccine comes out that people are even going to be like, that that doesn't, that doesn't guarantee immunity. That just like, this is just going to become another flu or something. People are still going to die every year. And it's like, what? one person dies from Corona. We shut everything down. You're like, is that how this works now? I don't, I don't get it because it makes no sense. The example I've been using is with coronavirus deaths in Canada being essentially the same as car crashes. The risk is, is statistically the same. Yes. You can't infect people with a car crash, but you can kill other people with your car by driving shittily. So Maybe helmets while we drive is the way to go. Like maybe that's what we need in, yeah. in addition to the mask while we drive. Now, uh, exactly. the, article I, the article I was talking about actually calls them conspiracy theorists for spreading uh, election fraud conspiracies. Do you have any opinion on the actual election itself? I mean, there's a few good points. Like, like I said, I try to stay away from like, pinpoint conspiracy theories exactly but there were some good points brought up as far as that especially on the fact like how joe biden broke record breaking numbers for voters (laughs) like it makes no sense he's possibly like 
one of the worst Democratic candidates in who knows how long. He definitely, he barely won the Democratic vote to begin with over Bernie Sanders. Hardly won. And then you got, it just makes no sense. Like he's not, he's a, he wasn't a popular candidate to begin with, yet he's breaking records. It doesn't make sense. Plus you got, you got already proof that there's literal people that don't exist voting or people that are long dead voting. It, like there's actual proof of this. There's videos of people at polling stations counting polls, losing their shit when they look at yeah. the poll. You know what I mean? That's already, that's already like, you know what I mean? They're, they're supposed to be indifferent about what's going on. They're not mm -hmm. even supposed to show any emotion to something like that. So it's, uh, I mean, I'm just looking at what's there. I'm not even like trying to reach and say, oh, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. I'm looking at what I can see and what I know, what's being put out there, and that's it. Yeah, that's one of my biggest problems is they can't even present it as if they're they're even considering it. It's nope, it's 100%. There's no fraud at all. I mean, there's videos of people boarding up windows. Why would you do that if you're at a polling station? It's not cardboard wasn't going to stop the windows from being broken if that's what you're worried about. And to say that there's absolutely yeah. nothing is completely silly. And you look at something, you take the press conference they had yesterday, uh, Giuliani and Sidney Powell there talking about the voting fraud. Believe it or not, and, and you can say that they didn't present any evidence, but all they say is that they're bringing up uh, Venezuela and, this, and the president there that died in 2003. They don't address anything that they actually said. It's just, it, it's the Kanye thing where they just take something he said out of context. Now we can move on to actual, your actual job now. I see you're getting the mustache going. I like it. I'm always going to support yeah. the mustache. I voted on your poll to keep it, FYI. <laughs> Do you have a timeline for a fight yet? Um, I'm looking for more like late February, March, around there. Nothing clear in cement, you know, but uh, we'll see. That's what I'd like. You know, I feel like I'd be uh, comfortable with that time period. Is there any indication from the company that there's going to be crowds at any time in the future? Um, well, Dana White said for International Fight Week, they plan on the, uh, there's a new arena going up in Abu Dhabi somewhere or something along those lines. And uh, yes, yeah, so that would be awesome to go there. Like I really would don't want my next fight to be in an empty arena. It's really like, it's super, it's pretty disappointing to be in a spot where you're at the pinnacle of the sport. Finally, after all this hard work and it really doesn't feel like you're there, you know what I mean? You're not fighting in front of a crowd. It doesn't feel any like, there's no uh, like energy to anything you're doing if you're fighting in an empty gym, essentially. I, I mean, I feel like at the beginning, people are sort of like, this is cool. But again, you have the ultimate fighter for that. You have goods coming back. You have Dana White's Contender Series, which you fought on for that. And you get that feel there. You have other sports where they can't, or other leagues where they can't draw people for that, if you so choose. But I know exactly what you're saying, especially for somebody like when Masvidal fought, half of the drama is, was when he made his entrance last time for the BMF belt and he plays the Scarface theme and it's, and it's sweet. I can't lie. And I, and I got to imagine that's why Conor McGregor has delayed his fight for so long because he doesn't want to fight in front of an empty arena. Do you, do you think that's what it is? Oh, it's, it's absolutely awful. Like, I'm sorry, but like people who are like kind of advocating for it, like, like, oh, this is cool. This is, you know what I mean? This is way less pressure. It's the opposite, man. The, the crowd is what gives you tunnel vision. The crowd is really what puts you in the zone. You know what I mean? You're in a fight. You're in a fight now, you know? You fight your whole career in front of a crowd, even in the lower leagues. You know what I mean? There's people there. Um, so the fact that, like, the, the, you're going out of the normal now, you know? It's not, it's never something I, I enjoyed. I didn't enjoy fighting in an empty arena. I'm grateful that we have the opportunity to still fight and compete, but fighting an empty arena, it just is not it for me. Has the ability to hear maybe both corners and probably even the announcers too. We've heard people say that has that changed at all? Oh yeah. You can hear the other corner as clear as you can hear your own. It's awful. It's absolutely terrible. Cause it's like, it's not even about hearing distinct voices. You can just hear anything. At that oh, okay. point, you can hear a pin drop, you know, it's, it's completely dead silent. At that point, I'd imagine fighters who speak English and another language might have an advantage of hearing 
both sides and having the other, like if you're fighting a Russian guy and he can understand your corner and you can't understand his, that's kind of an advantage, I would say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, 100%. And it's like completely um, like throws you off when you can hear another voice and you can hear direction from somebody else. Like, I mean, I know it's not supposed to be like, you know, you're in the zone or whatever, but like I said, it's just different. It's not something that you're used to and it definitely throws you off when you hear the other corner telling their guy what to do or what you're going to do, what they think you're going to do. You know what I mean? So it's just a, it's strange. Now I'm just pulling up the rankings here. Who in the division do you know that you can beat? Because when you were in TKO, people wrote you off until you got to the title fight and you was Charlie the title fight? Or, no, that was before. No, was Jordan it? was the title, but, but yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So, yeah, people wrote you off uh, before that until you won, and then probably still after that. And then Charlie got the call first because he's flashier. But I, mm-hmm. I always put, put you to, like, at the top, especially in Canada. Who do you look at that division in the rankings and see that you can – I know I can beat this guy. Do you, have you thought well, about that yet? I don't really even know who's in the top 15, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> but uh, – there's uh like I don't really pay attention to that stuff no more because it changes oh. every single fight card, you know. Um, but uh, there's definitely some guys I'm looking at for my next fight, you know, like people I'd prefer. Um, I just want to get the ball rolling again. Uh, really like working on my mental game more than anything going into this next fight. Uh, I feel like that was an area that I lacked a little bit coming into the last one. Um, it's just a different, uh, like I said, without the crowd. Uh, everything, you know, it's just a different experience. And, um, yeah, you know, just kind of finding my why I, again, I guess, you know. Um, so I know when I'm on, I'm on, you know. Uh, I feel like my MMA grappling is at a different level than most 145ers out there. I feel like um, once I get somebody down, it's pr- going to be an extremely long night for them. And I even feel like I can strike with a lot of these guys too. Um, I'm super well-rounded. I'm super young. And, um, yeah, I don't really feel like there's a lot stopping me. Yeah, I think you'll have a definite advantage against some of these lanky guys at your weight class and taking them down. Well, that's just my opinion. I mean, you look at some of the, I mean, I think Barbosa's fading. I mean, I don't want to be mean, but I am who I am, so I will be. <laughs> yeah. I, look at, I look at some of the, the taller, lankier guys, and I think somebody like, you with your experience has an advantage and that sort of thing. Now I'm going to completely write off the last fight. Do you want to talk about that at all? Where you, would you rather just say, pretend that didn't happen? Cause I just saw it as a, a silly mistake and you're still so young that it doesn't matter at all. In my opinion, do you want to talk about that? Uh, I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter to me. I'm good with whatever. I just feel like I, I, I'm not, I'm not here to make excuses about a fight or anything. You know what I mean? A loss is a loss. And I obviously, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses, but at the end of the day, I consider that fight, you know, it's like a bad bounce, basically. You know what I mean? It's, it, it is what it is. Um, I know I'll beat that guy if we ever fight again. Nine times out of 10, mm-hmm. fuck, 99 times out of 100, I'll beat him. You know what I mean? Like, I'm better all around. I'm a better grappler despite what happened. I know, I know I'm better everywhere than him. You know, it was, like I said, a bad bounce. I don't feel like I had proper preparation for that fight i don't feel like i had the best preparation for that fight due to like a few reasons but again ultimately that's on me that's my fault i was the one who chose to step in the cage at the end of the day and that's uh yeah all i can do is go pick up another win and nobody's even going to remember that now as long as you got the ufc business card can you go into the training facility anytime you want uh the ufc pi yeah you just buzz in and they have a list of people like the it's roster and everything. Now, what have you have you heard anything about them cutting a, a whole bunch of fighters? Uh, no, I haven't heard nothing yet. Um, I'm not trying to say you're. Gonna... <laughs> no, no. Apparently, uh, they were talking about that like the roster is like bigger than it's ever been. Obviously, mm-hmm. with contender series, they're signing a lot of guys. But I feel like a big mistake I made even. Uh, uh, between my fights was fighting so soon, you know, like I didn't really get a time to soak in what was going on. And I definitely felt somewhat um, like everybody is on this crazy, 
like tip of fucking fighting back to back to back to back to back. Everybody's trying to fight all the time now. And uh, so, it, but for me, it's like, as much as I love fighting for the UFC, I love being in the UFC. Uh, it's my career at the end of the day. And if I don't feel ready for a fight, you know what I mean? I shouldn't feel pressured to take it. I shouldn't feel, um, you know what I mean? Um, like if I'm not ready, I'm not ready. That's how it should be. And I shouldn't have to be pressured, you know? Um, so I'm going to definitely, uh, worry on that, worry about that in the future and, uh, definitely take my time for something like that. Did your brother come out with you? Shout out, Tony. Um, did he come out to Vegas with you? Uh, for the last one, yeah. Yeah, he did. And, and what's going on with him? Is he training with you every day while you're back, or has he got something else going on? Uh, well, it's kind of hard in the regional scene right now to find any fights, especially being Canadian. You know, um, It's not the easiest to cross the border and go tell them you're fighting somewhere. <laughs> and visas cost a lot of money, so... Um, uh, yeah, he's still trained though. And just got to wait. You know what I mean? It's everybody's in a shitty spot. Well, trust me. I just got off my quarantine. I don't know if you saw that. Here's my COVID sheet. They don't give you anything you, official. Yeah. They don't call you. They don't, they didn't even call me, email me. Fuck all. They didn't give a shit. Well, they called me. I had to stay. They, uh, really? yeah. Uh, the border guard was just like, oh, too bad. We changed the rules like two weeks ago. Turns out 80% of people don't have to quarantine. So unless you work for CBC, you got to quarantine if you work for a news company. Yeah, what the hell? Pretty shitty. It was pretty shitty, let me tell you. So what else is going on? Are you um, are, are you thinking that this is going to be shut down for, I don't know, at this point past Christmas? Obviously, I think at this point it's going to be Christmas at least. Yeah, for me, uh, well, um, there's some articles coming out that vaccines will be available to Canadians come January. And the unfortunate thing is, is that I doubt that they're going to start opening anything up again until the vaccine comes out because they're going to be like all on this. We made the f mistake first. We're not going to make the same mistake twice. You know, all that bullshit. I can already see it now. Um, I don't really see how it plays out any different than that. Um, and then fuck to, to, to distribute the vaccine throughout the whole population enough. That'll be another year more than likely, you know? So who really knows who really knows? Honestly, it's, it's kind of scary to think about and I'm mm -hmm. really getting like, it's just, uh, I don't even know what to say at this point. It's just pretty, it, it's, uh, it's kind of sad and scary at the same time. I'm starting to wonder if, we're going to get to a point and I made this point a couple of times, but it's like you watch the only things you see online are people going to facilities. Like let's say you're going to a super fancy hotel. It's all closed off to, to almost everybody else. You've got one, like uh, I'll call them a Butler there. If, <laughs> and then the facility is closed off people going to dinner. It's closed off to everybody else. I feel like it's, we're getting to the point where it might be, these things are for our privileges and the regular people aren't going to go going to be able to eat inside. You're not going to get uh, to fly on planes. Cause why are these, why are airlines going to run 30 flights a day when they're pretty much empty? So I don't know. I feel like that's something that not a lot of people are talking about that. It's slowly getting to be, we are already pretty separated as society. Now we're getting into even bigger class differences. Do you see that at all? Do you, am I making any sense, man? <laughs> No, I, I know, uh, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, but um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it'll go that far. Hopefully, fucking not. That'd be crazy. That'd be nuts. But um, you really never know, though, because it's like, like uh, I forget where was it. Like, um, was it a mayor or a governor somewhere was seen having dinner out? That was um, the governor of California. Recently. Yeah, exactly. And one of the biggest advocates for this fucking lockdown shit. And you know what I mean? So it's like, who's allowed to break the rules? Who's not, you know, like, um, and when do we say enough's enough? Like when, 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 like what, they're going to keep can, uh, giving us this information. We got that. I'm, I'm not sure what her name is. The Asian lady who's like the head of health Teresa in Canada. Tam. Um, 
Yeah, Teresa Tam. Um, she's literally dropping propaganda quotes straight up, like saying, if we don't get this under control, Canada is going to be up to 60,000 cases a day. Yeah. Like, okay, so you can't make, you can't make any claims. You can't make any claims downplaying the virus by saying, oh, you know, maybe this isn't as bad because there's no scientific proof telling you that. But you can hype up the virus to make it seem like it's some monstrous fucking thing that's going to kill everybody that it touches, which is literally what you're doing. You're telling people that if we don't get our shit together, that um, 60,000 cases a day are what we are uh, going to get. Like, what? How are you even allowed to say that? How is that even allowed is what I want to know. That's like, you're literally instilling fear. And then you got people that are like, obviously they don't fuck it. They don't look up any of their own information as far as um, numbers. Like the, what the death rate of people under the age of 60 is, is still only 0.6% or something like that of confirmed cases of confirmed cases. That's people who actually have the virus and that's under 60. You know what I mean? And okay. The average life expectancy in Canada is 82. So, I mean, what do you expect after that age? You know what I mean? Like, when do we draw the line and be like, okay, these people are health risks for fucking the regular flu, bronchitis, pneumonia. Um, and I'm not saying they're, they're worthless. They're not worth anything, but mm -hmm. Hey, let's take care of those people, people who are around them, watch out and let's go about our fucking shit because people like, like I said, we can't do this forever, man. We can't even do this for another six months in my eyes. We can't do this for another six months. It's crazy. The, they made all these predictions at the start of their projections of, of astronomical deaths. It didn't happen, at least here. And now, they're, and now they've switched to cases. And now that's the big worry is they'll get so many cases. Today, Doug Ford said there was, they have to lock down in these places because the hospitals are being overwhelmed. And my question is, and I put out a tweet about this, 400 or so hospitals in Ontario and there's 518 people in hospital for COVID, much less that are actually in the ICU, so it's, it's dangerous for them. Over 80% of the deaths happen in long-term care homes. What is this uh, window that we're constantly, these goalposts that we're constantly widening? If, there, if there's little more than one person per hospital, even if they're, they are in the same place, you can't spread them out. You're, the hospitals clearly aren't overrun, but they're just going back to the same reasons they had before. The hospitals are going to be overrun. Uh, the cases are going to get out of control. We got to wait for the vaccine. It's like they gave us a little break and now party time's over. That's what they're doing in Quebec, actually. They're saying, we're going to give you four days uh, over the Christmas holidays to, to act normal, but then it's back to lockdown. What happened to the French? I'm French. I'm disappointed. That may, yeah. That, like, how's that? Where's the logic behind that? So we're going to let you celebrate and then we're going to. After the holidays, we're going to tell you how bad celebrating was for the yeah. holidays. And then we're going to come back and say all these cases happen. And it's like what they came out and straight up said that what um, so Ontario teachers were exempt from testing for COVID because there was a 50 percent false positive rate or something like that. So they completely well, kids are don't die. Like, the whole kids are going to spread it to teachers and to their parents. Thing never happened at all. We knew kids most people knew kids weren't really affected by it. There's been like oh. two deaths under 20 in the entire country. One, uh, Yeah. Maybe in the entire country, uh, two, but in Ontario, there's only one. And that single case was already a problematic person. Like there exactly. was already, uh, like very, very like high risk. You know what I mean? Like some sort of either lung or heart condition on top of getting COVID. All right, let's close on a fun note, TJ. The Tej, if I can bring that back. I'm still going to continue yeah. to call you the Tej <laughs> until you change your name officially. You've got the blue check mark now. Does that has that increased the amount of shitty messages you've got for your political views? <laughs> oh, dude. You should see the amount of unfollows I got cuz I was posting all that fucking voter fraud Trump shit. I was going crazy on that for a couple of days and now I'm back to the corona stuff. And that's the interesting <laughs> thing about Corona is that completely disappeared for the three days the fucking election was up. Oh yes, of nobody course. gave a fuck. Nobody celebrations gave a fuck, everywhere. That's... Yeah, and then, um, but uh, yeah, I got over a hundred unfollows within a day or two. 
it was actually pre- pretty insane how mad people get over this. It's, uh, it's interesting. And it's like, and it's not like I'm sharing anything absurd in my eyes. Like sometimes I'll, I can't share a chart that shows real numbers and do that. You know what I mean? That makes you mad that I'm actually sharing some truth that goes against what you want to fucking believe in. You know, like it's just fucked. I had a good one and it was a girl, my buddy's friend, like it's his family friend, this girl. And she posted something that says uh, like the day of the election, the day after. And she says, if you like Trump or support him, even if you're in Canada, you're a piece of trash person and not, and that's all there is to it essentially. And I'm just like, what, why are you saying this? Like, like, why are you, you're calling like 70 million people plus <laughs> other, other countries that like him garbage. And I'm like, what? Like I, we already talked about this. I already went through a whole list of things. And of course it, of course it's going to come down to orange man bad, but you know, oh, what her, yeah. you know what she said? Her biggest problem was that right. Trump made it that insurance companies don't have, it's not mandatory for insurance companies to provide birth control to college students. So Trump's racist, sexist, homophobic, and this was all in the original post. And if you support him, you're garbage. But my biggest problem with him is that his, one of his team made it so that college students don't have free birth control through their jobs. And I'm just like, good God. <laughs> like, that's roll the only that back thing anymore. you could think of. Yeah. Like, that's, see, that's what I mean. These people, it's such blunt blanket statements where it's like, okay, like you said, orange man, bad shit. It's like, and it's all media. It's all because like, there was someone that literally was like, oh, you support Trump? I'm like, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm pretty indifferent about it overall. I mean, I'm not super hardcore anyway. I mean, I don't see how how Joe Biden's any doing anything good for anybody. And I really not like you're wearing a MAGA hat essentially. Yeah, exactly. For me, it's just more the people who support Joe Biden like the person you, like you, the person who was messaging me, you know what I mean? Are look at the way you're trying to attack me right now. It's just weird. And then she's like, um, um, Oh, well you're racist. You must uh. be racist. Then I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, what has he done? That's racist. Oh, all the stuff he said about Mexicans and Muslims. I'm like, you do realize that Hispanic population is the second highest voter group after white people for, um for trump donald trump do you realize that you know what i mean like he had record numbers he had record numbers for black votes uh more jew or more muslims voted for him than jews did which surprised a lot of people record number for women record number for latinos i mean a lot of the reasons they give is because they came from cuba and south american countries that are communist (laughs) it makes sense and it's like it's like okay so the guy wants to keep illegal immigrants out of his country and that and whatever he puts them in cages, which was a bill signed by the Obama administration to begin with. It was just something that carried over into Trump into Trump's uh, presidency. Um, and then people are like, Oh no, Trump started that. I'm like, no, he didn't actually. It's right there. You could like Google's an amazing tool. <laughs> people don't realize that. They do hide it though. They do hide a lot of that stuff. They do. They don't like, they're like, Oh, he, 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 he's racist. I'm like, but why it's everywhere, man. It's everywhere, man. That's the ex- explanation you get when you ask why you're like, why it's everywhere, man. Look it up. It's everywhere. Yeah. Like, okay. If you, if you search my, my network on YouTube, the first thing you'll get is explanations of why we're bad from other news companies. You won't even get our channel. So that's the sort of stuff that we have to deal with. But I think on that note, we can go. Um, it's good talking to you. I'm going to try to get you on. I got something else in the works on a, a quote unquote different channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'll, that I'll try to get you on in the future. Uh, it's good to talk to you, man. Good to see that you're doing well. I wish you all the best. I'm watching every time. Don't worry. I'm, a, I'm, I'm amping you up every time. So you got the support here. Anything else oh, you want to yeah. say? Uh, no, man, I appreciate you having me on, and uh, it's always good uh, getting in talks like this. You know, I'm interested in this kind of stuff, so, yeah, I appreciate it. All right, message me. Any funny stuff you want me to share, I'll be, I'll be down. Anything at all, man. For sure, man, thanks. All right, take it easy, buddy. Take it easy, bye.